In WWDC 2021, we learned a lot about Swift UI 3. And in the second part of learning what's new in Swift UI 3, we are going to tackle the last part of the 21 features that I like the most about Swift UI 3. Alex here from developer.com and go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's open up Xcode to dive in. So let's dive deep into Swift UI 3, what we have learned from WWDC 2021. This is the second part of the series where I'm going to show you 21 cool examples of Swift UI 3. We have gone through uh, 10 uh, already, so go ahead and check that out in the playlist. Now this is the second part where we are going to finish off with uh, 11 more and uh, yeah if you are interested and do you you do like this teaching style go ahead and check out rebelleboard.com slash mentoring where i can teach you swift ui or i can help you with bugs in your code go ahead and check it out rebelleboard.com slash mentoring now uh, we left off by uh, let me just go to our xcode project yeah by the way this is in uh, the beta so this has to be uh, Xcode beta 13 and um, yeah this is how it's going to uh, work for you maybe this will uh, be deprecated or some things might change but this is right after WWDC 2021. We left off by adding the keyboard accessory view and we are going to start off with number 11 and that is how to show and hide the keyboard. So let's just go here and uh, show hide keyboard. As you can see, here we have a text field and we have a button. That's just it. Let me just uh, go ahead and take a look at that inside our simulator. Uh, keyboard accessory view, yeah, that was one, one show hide keyboard. So basically that's it. Nothing uh, to be uh, added right now, but Swift UI 3 introduces a new property wrapper and that is focus state and this is how we are going to kind of learn a little bit about focus state and we are going to go all the way advanced with focus state but for now let's just create a focus state right over here and that will be a private variable and um, let's just call this is name text field uh, text field focused and uh, this will be of type bool Okay, so that's our focus state. Now, how would we use it? Well, first of all, uh, you usually want to focus text field when the view appears. So let's do that first. So right over here, you just go on appear. And uh, what do we want to do? Well, we just go self uh, dot uh, is name text field focused equals true. Now, if you run this, you will encounter that this will not work because uh, this will get called uh, before we actually have access to the text field. So what I usually do here is just go and cheat a little bit and use dispatch queue dot main dot async after. And uh, let's just go with dot now and plus. 0 0.5 seconds so half a second and let's just execute something and we are going to do uh, this part okay so let's build the run and now we will see and this is not equals but a plus sign you will see that the name text field will be focused so uh, show how it keyboard let's see what's happening here yeah it is not uh, focusing because we didn't set, okay, which one should be focused. So we didn't tie it uh, to our focus state. So that is really simple. On the text field that we want to focus, so we want to bind it, we just go focused and uh, we just go with the condition. I will talk about the other one in just a second and we just go dot uh, dollar sign is named text field focus let's hit command r and uh, we will be okay done with that uh, show height keyboard there it is after 0 0.5 seconds it is focused now we want to dismiss the keyboard and that is also straightforward we just go is name text field focused and instead of being true we want to set this to false command r again so we can see that in action and uh, there we go keyboard 
show hide keyboard and now dismiss the keyboard really really nice okay so that's the base use of focus state now what if i want to go through the focus of more than one uh, text fields and that can be also done because this focus state is not just a boolean value you can have an enum here so let's just go into the focus state example view uh, where is it focus state example view okay so here i have two text fields uh, and a secure field. So I would like to go through the name, email, and password. So first of all, I want to create an enum for these. So an enumeration for all of these. So we just go enum, and let's just call this field. And uh, we just go through all of the cases, name, email, password. Okay. So we have name, email, and password. Now we want to create a focus state for our fields. And uh, we are going to use uh, the field, not a bool, va bool value. So focus state var and uh, focused field. So focused field, because we want to know which focus, which field is focused. So we just go field and by default, this has to be an optional because yeah, there might be no focused field on your view. Okay, so next up, uh, let's just do uh, the on appear thing again, really, really quickly. So right over here before the navigation bar title, let's just go again on appear and uh, dispatch dot async after and we want to execute some work and now plus 0 0.5 and now what we want to do well we just go self dot focus field equals and we want to select the one that yeah we want to focus so we just go name that would be our first one okay so uh, Let's let's just see this in action because this is this is so powerful. I have to see this. So at focus state. Oh, again, I forgot to set the focus on the text field. Yeah, we got used to this. And then we just go focused. And then here we just go with the second one. As you can see here, we have a binding, and that is the focus state. So we just go at a focused field and equals what focus state this text field equals to and that is dot name and uh, yeah let's just go ahead and add in here some other stuff so uh, like a text uh, context con text content type and this should be dot name and also i want to go with a submit label this is also new uh, you can add in here a submit label and this would be, as you can see, there's quite a lot. I'm going to go with next because uh, it should imply that we should go to the next text field. Okay, so let's hit command R and see that in action. So focus state and there it is. And the kind of submit button here is the next one. And if I tap on it, well, nothing really happens, nothing that I want to do. So uh, let's just move forward and add some focused states onto our text field. And I will just copy these out. Oh, I jump to definition, but select that and paste it in there. So we have focus field. In this case, it would be email and then email address. Okay, next label is fine. And right over here, it would be password. And then again here, password. And uh, instead of next, let's just use join. Okay. So yeah, this, the fields are all set up. Now I want to move the focus between those whenever I hit the submit label. So as you already learned in the previous episode, so if you haven't already, go ahead and check that video also, the first episode on learning Swift UI free, good stuff. 
and there's something called on submit. So we just go dot on submit and uh, we just go through all of the focus field switch uh, focus field and uh, we want to do some things. So case dot name we want to go and set the focus field to be dot email and that is how simple that is. So let me just copy this out, paste it in. Uh, here we have, if the case is email, we want to go to the password. Okay. And then if this is password, we want to uh, set this to nil. So focused field equals nil. And uh, yeah, maybe let's just print out, print out uh, joining, something like that. Also, we need to handle default case, default. And on the default, we are just going to print out, for now, default, but you can handle that. Uh, to your liking. Okay, so let's see what happens now. Focus state, there we go. We just type in some name and then uh, next, we got into the email, again, some things. And uh, there we go, click on next again and password. We just type in our password. And then as you can see, this is a join and it says joining and we dismiss the keyboard. Really, really cool stuff. And so that is focus state. Next up, I want to talk about the binded collections. So binded collections, uh, what are those? Uh, and you can really understand this with a cool example. So right over here, we have a uh, for each with the profiles. You can see we have Alex, Bob and Claire, and uh, we are just presenting them. So it's right over here, binded collection. And we have Alex, Bob and Claire. So what I want to do here, is to have another uh, list, so a list, I mean, this is just a for each. I want to have a list here with text fields. You know, text fields are binded, you have to bind them. So right over here, our profile model has already a name. So because this is a state variable, I want to kind of bind them to the profiles, but you cannot at this stage of Swift UI. Well, with Swift UI free, you can add in binded data, uh, binded properties as the data. So it's really, really cool. Let, let me just show you. So typing it out will be uh, much easier and you will understand it. So here we have our list and we just go with a for each. And uh, yeah, by the way, let me just go ahead and uh, copy this for each out. It will be much, much faster. And uh, I won't go with the horizontal stack. I will just go ahead and have a text field right over here and uh, with a title and that will be our name. And yeah, as you can see here, we need a binding. So oh, also before we go with the binding, let me just go ahead and add a text field style. Off. And this is again a new stuff here that you might want to learn. You mo most probably do want. You have just rounded border. It's really, really simpler than the old way of uh, adding the rounded border text field style. And you have to have those two parentheses if you forget. You don't. It doesn't compile. Yeah. So that's it for the text field style. So we want to have a binding here. So we just want to bind the profile, and that's really simple. You just have a binding as the data, and then you can also have the profile as a binded value. And here, just go at profile and dot name, and you are binded with that. And basically that's it. Let me just show you, because now you will see the changes on the actual for each that we already had. So binded collection, there it is. Alex, let's just delete some, there it is. Like Bob, maybe, Bo, <laughs> Bob. And it's really, really cool. Now you can have binded collections in your Swift UI apps. Next up is something that I've been missing quite a lot, and that is a foreground style. Now, what is a foreground style? Let me just take you through an example. Let's just go back here, and here we have primary, secondary, ternary, and uh, quaternary uh, texts. 
and uh, those are with the large title. Now, as you can see, the, uh, the foreground color is black. Now, let me just show you where is that. So, foreground, there it is. So, here we have our text. Let's just add a foreground style. So, right over here, dot foreground style. And we have uh, this part, dot, and you just go primary. Okay, that's just primary. So, that will be with a 100% opacity. Now, if you just go with secondary, then it's 50. And we also have a ternary, no, 75, 50 for the ternary, and then quaternary, we have 25%. So, quaternary, and that's it. So, really, really cool. And you can have this all the way from all types of views. So, foreground size, there we go, primary, secondary, tertiary, tertiary, and quaternary. Great. Now, let's talk about SF symbols because this foreground style is uh, really, really powerful with SF symbols. So, let's take a look at our SF symbols example view. And uh, what do we have here? Well, let's just scroll a little bit up. And yeah, there's not much, but we will have this example right over here. So. First of all, we have our, let's see, Cloud Sun Rain. And uh, you, you already kind of know this, but uh, I want to show you how to use it, you know, with a rendering mode. We just added here a rendering mode or content mode of a multicolor. Now we can just use the symbol rendering mode. So dot symbol uh, rendering mode, there it is. And uh, we just go, let's just go with the multicolor first. So there are, I believe, four types of uh, rendering modes, and uh, that is one, so multicolor. This is the default multicolor one. So let's just go uh, with the other one. That is something new, and that is, again, symbol rendering mode and the monochrome. And uh, for the monochrome, let's just see how monochrome looks at this stage, so SF symbol monochrome. Well, not really uh, much, but we can add a tint, I believe, uh, or let's just go with the foreground color. Maybe tint will also go, but uh, let's just go with the foreground color of dot and some new Swift UI free colors that is mint. Okay, SF symbols. Really, really nice. Okay, so as you can see, some of the uh, Swift UI, like SF symbols, have multiple uh, elements. This is primary, secondary, and tertiary. Now, they can be added hierarchically also. So, the next up is a symbol rendering mode, and that is hierarchical. And uh, let's see how that looks like. Let's see it right over here. And yeah, as you can see, those are with the primary, tertiary, maybe? Yes, there are. So also, you can add in your custom colors if you wanted to. So uh, let's just go and use the final symbol rendering mode, and that is palette. And now we can just add a foreground style, foreground style, and we're going to use the one with the primary, secondary, and tertiary. There might be some uh, SF symbols that don't have tertiary, or if you don't add tertiary to SF symbols that, don't, that do have uh, the tertiary one, the secondary will be also used. So let's use uh, this one. And the primary, let's just go with some new colors again, indigo, secondary, uh, maybe mint, and then tertiary, uh, let's just go with brown. I really missed brown. Okay. Let's just see that. SF symbols. <laughs> cool. Well, it looks ugly, but now you can know how to use the foreground, uh, foreground style. Okay. And uh, finally, uh, there is fill. So symbol. Uh, oh, no. Uh, that is a symbol variant. So let's just uh, let me just tell you about variants. And uh, we are going to use dot fill right here with a foreground color. So you can see that we can also add a foreground color for our filled one. So foreground color 
orange. There we go. If I could type out that correctly. Really, really nice. So yeah, it's kind of the same as we had with the monochrome, but uh, you can have a symbol variant of fill also. Well, I don't see the difference here, but uh, if you have an a, a outline and a filled one, you will see that. And uh, I will explain this to you right over here with the bolts. So let's just go right over here and have a symbol variant. Well, for the first one, we are just going to leave it as is so we can see that it's right over here. And this, uh, what's the default uh, variant? And that is fill. Now, please note that we are using the system name bolt. We're not adding dot fill, but this symbol variant dot fill will fill in those uh, for us automatically if there is a filled version of that SF symbol. Okay, and there's also circle, square. Let me just go really quickly through those. So circle and then square. Okay, and then slash. Okay, and uh, there isn't a, a rectangle for the bolt, so I added check mark right over here. So rectangle. Okay, so those are the symbol variants. Okay, and then let's just go SF symbols. Really, really nice. Okay, but uh, still, I want to make this even. Uh, better so you can see here with the circle it's it's the same opacity the circle and the bolt also but we can also add a rendering mode right over here maybe and uh, let's just go dot symbol uh, rendering mode dot hierarchical and there it is let's just see that much much nicer so you can see the strike through and the check mark it's really, really powerful. Okay, so next up, it's a really, really cool thing, and that is that now texts support Markdown. Yes, really, they do support Markdown. It's really, really uh, great. So we have Markdown. Here is a hello word. So let me just copy this out a few more times and paste it in there. I don't know, maybe that will be enough. So we can have in here bold, and uh, with more bound, it's uh, bold, okay. And we can have italic bold, maybe. And we can also have, of course, simple italic. And strike through. Well, all the stuff that you might expect from uh, um, Markdown. So strike through and uh, also uh, we can now have links links inside here this is really really cool so let's just go with link and then just add https redeveloper redeveloper.com slash mentoring yeah so if you do want to have a mentoring session, go ahead and check out rebelloper.com slash mentoring. I can teach you all of these on a mentoring session. So let's see how this looks like. Okay, uh, let's just select Markdown. Really, really cool. And if I tap on the link, there it is. It's taking me to rebelloper.com slash mentoring where you can have a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting with me. Okay, so uh, that is Markdown, but uh, yeah, a few more other formatting styles have been added. And the one that I want to cover is the date formatter. Yes, as you can see here, we uh, are going to add in some text. For example, a date. Now well, let's just go with our current date and uh, let's just go for method. And uh, yeah, that will just give us back a string value, uh, really, really powerful because yeah, otherwise you would need to use some sort of other libraries. Now this is in its infancy, so it might lack some other features, but um, it's really, really cool, a, a good start. So let me just show you some others that I just found here. So we just go formatted and uh, we could just go with the date and time. So uh, there are quite a few, but uh, let me just show you the omitted and with the 
time is shortened okay and also for the other one so we just go formatted and then with the format and we just go ISO 83 uh, 8601 so let's see date formatter so uh, this is what we got okay this is this is not that bad but uh, yeah it's still in its infancy uh, really looking forward for some other st formatting styles also okay so that's date formatter now we come to a really really important part of swift ui free and that is uh, buttons so let me just go into the button example as you can see it's really really long because buttons we are going to use from now on whenever whatever is tappable and it's kind of a button like we are going to use buttons all over the place even in alerts you will see in just a second so we have our simple next button that's just it now uh, on this shop button i want to show you a button style so a new button style and button style we already knew this but now we can go with the dot notation dot and uh, this is bordered really really nice and uh, also let me just show you this one so we have our border the shop let's just see this first so we have buttons and there we go next a simple one and then shop and that's just it but maybe i want to uh, uh have a prominence so we just go control prominence and there are a few standard and increased let me just uh, the default default one is standard of course let me just show you the increased one and then i will just come back to the default one so a button and this is the one so it, the system takes care of this automatically okay so let's just go back to standard maybe okay so what about the add button well uh, i want to teach you that there are now some roles to the buttons and that is console descriptive and let's start off with the console so if you just go role and dot cancel uh, that will be a cancel button well if i build and run now uh, you won't really see any anything anything's changed it's just simply add but if we just add in here a button style let's just add a button style there it is maybe again bordered and then uh, let's have a control prominence of increased now you don't want to go overboard with the increased control prominence because everything then it will be increased uh you just really want to know uh this one okay uh am i doing it on the right thing no i just went on to the delete button sorry about that folks let's just add that right over here and basically we see the same thing but not on the delete button but on the add button really really nice okay now you can see the both of them side by side okay delete button so the delete button should be kind of red and uh, yeah that's what the role of uh destructive is role dot destructive so we can see that okay this is this is uh, not that good and uh let me just go ahead and add the border and increase yeah basically uh, that's what i want to add for our delete button and the nice part is that before this we all have to do this so yeah as you can see they are all tappable and uh, do their stuff but now we just have our button style and control prominence okay and finally uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at our control size so let me just add in here again to be descriptive maybe on the visit site and then also to be uh, bordered and increased okay and um, yeah then we just go control size and uh, let's just go with large as you can see there are small regular and large but let me just show you the one with the large it's really really nice here it is and it's it's right out of the box okay also you might want to change this because yeah delete and visit site it's it's not uh, uh, red it shouldn't be red so we can just go and add a tint and uh, tint mint <laughs> a tint a mint tint color okay let's just go with the button really really nice okay and finally uh, as you can see here we have this toggle but 
there's a cool new feature and uh, I'm just going to code it out and uh, I will see. So first of all, we have our toggle here. It has an image of flag and as you can see, it says a symbol variant of fill and font for the large title so we can see it. And then we just go toggle style and there's a new toggle style called button. And uh, I also want to tint it in red. And this is not uh, re uh, mandatory, optional, but let's just tint it in red. Okay, let me just show you what happens right now. So we just go, and we have this flag over here. We just select it, it's toggled, toggle it back. It's really, really cool, really nice with the toggle. Okay, so that's it about buttons. We you will see a lot of places buttons being used in Swift UI free. Like you wouldn't really know that, okay, I need a button here. And uh, you will see, for example, in our next part, uh, we have our control group and we are going to use buttons also there. So control group, what is a control group? Well, it is actually a group of buttons that you can specify where they are. So let me just uh, uh, show you an example. So we have simple uh, VStack right over here and let's add our toolbar because we are going to add a toolbar and uh, let's just choose the one toolbar, the content and the toolbar item. Yes, with a placement. Okay, placement and content because I want to add this to our navigation bar trailing. Okay, and then the content, what should the content be? Well, let's add a button. So a button and uh, let's just have uh, with the role uh, and the action and the label. So maybe destructive and the action. I don't really care about the action right now. And I'm going to add an image of system name and trash. Okay. And uh, we can have more than one buttons. So I won't build and run just now. Um, let me just remove the role from our button here. And um, let's just have ellipsis for more. Okay. So yeah, basically that's it. Uh, now we have a control group and uh, where is it? Uh, Markdown date format uh, control group, here it is. Now we have it right over here. Uh, well, because we didn't add the control group style, we just having it like so. But if I go on there, right over here, let me just go dot control, uh, group style and that is dot navigation well auto completion should help let's see what's that's the problem here yeah i think i need to add all of this below the navigation title yeah, it's still a better code maybe it will work maybe it won't let's see uh control group style yeah, I didn't add in the control group. Sorry about that, guys. I'm just in a hurry. Let's just add in our control group. There we go. And now we can just move those buttons in there and uh, move our style to our control group. And now it should work. Yep. Okay. Control group. And there it is. Really, really nice. Okay, let's move on to the last two sections that I want to talk about, and that is the alert and the confirmation dialog. Now, alerts have been uh, rethinked, and I really do like them. So let's go to the alert example. And there are two buttons here, show alert and show error alert. So let's take care of, uh, well, maybe the easiest one with the show error alert. I really like this one. And you just go alert and you want to go with the one that has error. Okay, so yeah, it has actions and error. There's also one with the message. I found that message isn't working just yet. Most probably it will be. So it's presented, we just go binding is error alert active and the error and that is my error dot something went wrong. I do have all of these already set up in this demo project. So yeah, don't worry about those. And for the action, 
here is the interesting part. So we have our binding, we have our error, and on the actions, we are going to add some buttons. So if we don't have any buttons, it will be automatically adding a console button. So let me just show you that. Let's just go all the way down, alert, and show error alert. There it goes. Something went wrong, console. Okay, uh, but we can also add our own button and uh, maybe that would be okay. And uh, a role, we do have to add it a role of dot console. Otherwise it will just add it on top of the default console button. And we want to have an action here. And uh, well, I don't really care about the action. Let's just have it like so. Okay, alert. Just go into the alert, show error alert, and we have our OK. And that is going to dismiss it because it has the role of console. And basically that's it. You can add in here some more buttons, but I will show you that when we are going to show uh, uh, a simple alert. So dot alert. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to type this out. It's uh, There are quite a lot of options here. And uh, let's just go with the title alert and then is presented and we are going to bind that. So is uh, alert active. And then we are going to add in some actions and uh, let's add our button here and let's call that maybe and uh, some action to it. And uh, again, I don't really care about that. And let me just duplicate this. So copying that out, paste it in there. Mm not now and then let's have a leave and um, let's have this as a role of dot destructive so you can see that there are also destructives and let's see if indeed we are going to have in here a console button so there we go show alert here we go, alert, console, and so on. Now we could just add in here a message also, like a text, hello message, but this might not show. Yeah, most probably it will show in uh, future updates. So show error, as you can see the message is in there, but the uh, syntax is. So yeah, most probably this is how uh, we can add a message. And if this works, then uh, most probably we will be able to add text fields also. So really, really cool. Okay, so let's move on to the last item on our list and that is the confirmation dialog. Now confirmation dialog is replacing the action sheet. And uh, yeah, that's the, that is what it does. Uh, if you are going to use iOS 14 uh, and previous, then you want to use uh, the action sheet 15 plus, you can use action sheets also, but it's recommended to use the confirmation dialog. So let's go to the confirmation dialog and it's just a simple button and you can toggle the uh, state variable right over here. And uh, let's just add one, so dot, confirmation dialog. Um, well, yeah, th this is okay. So this is the one that has everything. And the title, uh, let's just go with title maybe, is presented. Let's bind that to the is confirmation dialog presented. Title visibility. Now this is cool because you can hide the title. Let's just go with hidden for now. Actions, again, we will have an array of actions. Those are the same. And again, we are just using buttons. So button, uh, maybe okay. And uh, let's just give it an action. And yeah, I don't care about the action. And here also the message, this most probably will also not work for now. And uh, yeah, let's just hit Command R and see the confirmation dialog. And show confirmation dialog. Here it is. OK and console. Let's just go back and uh, let's just go visible for the uh, title. Yeah, as you can see, here is the message. So it's it's not about the title visibility. Yeah. Uh, 
it says title visibility and it's changing the message visibility. So that most probably will be fixed in another beta version of Swift UI 3. And that is it. 21 awesome new stuff about Swift UI 3 from WWDC 2021. Now, if you do enjoy these types of tutorials and you do like my teaching style, go ahead and check out rebellabird.com slash mentoring where you can have a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting with me. Uh, go ahead if you do want to learn about Swift UI or you do want to have some bugs fixed in your code, I am available. Swift UI 3 will bring us a ton of these new features that will help us build better apps, faster apps. Now, if you do like these types of videos, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And while you are at it, make sure to hit that notification bell to get notified of new videos because the next one will be about async await. And while you wait for that, go ahead and check out these videos as well too. I talk a lot about Swift UI, Swift in general, and as usual, I will see you in the next one.